Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as, as was mentioned, my name is Brent. I'm a health and wellness coach here at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I've been working at Mayo Clinic for, gosh, I, I suppose it's about 14 years now. I've been a, a health and wellness coach at the, this part of Mayo for the past six years. And one of the things that I do is to teach classes on the topic of gratitude, uh, in addition to my other wellness coaching obligations and, and training uh, duties. But the, some of the, the most rewarding experiences that I've had as a health and wellness coach deal with talking about gratitude with those members who come and take the class from us. So uh, it, it's a pleasure to be here today to talk about that. You know, during the months of November and December, this is often a time when gratitude and the giving of gifts is at the forefront of, of the minds of many people around the world. And one of the questions that often, thoughts that often run parallel to that time of year is how can we maintain this spirit of generosity and gratefulness year round? And so that's one of the things that we'll try to cover today and talk about today as we discuss the topic of gratitude. To be grateful, um, we can talk about the opposite of that, but we're not gonna start there. Okay. That's a, it's an exercise I often do with uh, members of our class too, is to talk about what what does grateful mean, or what are some synonyms to gratitude, and what are some antonyms, or the opposite of gratitude. Uh, but to be grateful is really to be aware of the, of the blessings that, that are in our lives, regardless of the circumstances. They could be adverse, they could be favorable. Uh, I know Dr. Amit Sood uh, from the Mayo Clinic talks about a definition of uh, gratitude, and, and I guess I could share part of that uh, with you. He says, again, to acknowledge and appreciate the blessings of life. It's also one of the basic building blocks of creating resiliency in your life as well. And resilience is one of those topics in which Dr. Sood really is uh, an expert. And so when we talk about gratitude, we're really talking about laying the foundation for becoming a resilient person. Um, sometimes we, we think about gratitude and being grateful for things. Uh, in reality, we can't always be grateful for things, especially when things aren't going very well for us. So we have to learn how to adjust our attitude and be grateful in a situation, regardless of what it is, and recognize the, the opportunities for growth and development that adversity can bring to us as well, and be grateful for those opportunities. Uh, there's a story that was told about a, a waiter who was trying to please a particular customer who came into uh, to his restaurant. And uh, one day he asked the, the customer how he liked the meal, and the customer said it was fine, except I, I wish you would serve more bread. And so the next day, when the customer came back, the waiter, in his attempt to try and please this customer, doubled the amount of bread, gave him four slices instead of two. And at the end of the meal, asked the customer how the meal was. He said it was great, but I could still use more bread. He wasn't satisfied. The next day, uh, the waiter doubled the amount of bread again, and still the customer was not satisfied. So he said to himself, this time I'm going to really, really do it all out. And he brought a nine-foot loaf of bread, cut it in two, gave it to the customer, and at the end of the meal asked the customer how it was. And he said, it was great, but I see you've gone back to giving only two slices of bread. And so uh, we have to be careful about what we are really grateful for. And it's not just the, the amount of things that we receive, but what are the circumstances surrounding that? So that's, um, that's kind of the, in, in essence, uh, gratitude. The practice of gratitude can take many forms. Um, I know there are a number of, of uh, sources that would cite the practice of gratitude, uh, one of the practices anyway, of keeping a gratitude journal. There have been studies done comparing the keeping of a journal on a weekly basis versus keeping one on a daily basis. And the advantages of keeping a gratitude journal on a daily basis really far outweigh those of doing it less frequently. We remind ourselves um, more frequently of the things that we're grateful for. It has uh, multiple benefits to us that uh, we'll maybe talk about a little bit later. But uh, a gratitude journal is, is one of those things that, that you, can, uh, you can do. Um, Here's an example, one that uh, just uh, one that I made called Book of Gifts. Uh, in this particular gratitude journal, I've asked members of my class to keep track of uh, gifts 
uh, in, in different forms. The, the, first of all, the gifts that they plan on giving in the course of a day, gifts that they give spontaneously, just that come up during the course of the day, and then gifts that they receive as well from other people. Now these don't have to be material gifts, but they can be gifts of kindness. Uh, they can be gifts of a smile, or perhaps a compliment. Uh, any, anything like that that you could be, uh, could be considered a gift is something that they would then record in this, in this journal. Um, so keeping a gratitude journal is, is one of those things. Finding a way to, to express gratitude or remind yourself of gratitude is another thing. And, and personally, I, I carry this, uh, this little stone in my pocket. And every time I uh, reach in for some change or something, and I feel that stone, I'm reminded that I need to be grateful as well for, for something in my life. And I can do that multiple times during the course of the day as well. Maybe I can give you some, some public examples of, of gratitude as well that, that are often witnessed. Uh, anyone who has watched uh, an award ceremony for perhaps like the Academy Awards, there's always a, an acknowledgement speech that goes along with uh, the winners of the awards. So that's an example of, of people publicly expressing gratitude. Uh, another is, is an element in most every book that uh, you'll pick up, not everyone, but most books have a section in them that's called Acknowledgements, which is basically a listing of uh, people to whom the writer is grateful for the role that they played in the publishing of that book. In fact, in one, in one case, uh, there's a book, uh, Daring Greatly by Brene Brown, where she actually titles that section of her book, Practicing Gratitude, which is a marvelous title for that, uh, that kind of effort in that, that section of the book. Um, other ways to, to express gratitude or to practice gratitude, obviously just the, the giving of, of other gifts, but uh, sending a card, a thank you card, maybe writing a note to someone that you were just thinking about, making a phone call, uh, giving a compliment, helping someone out who is uh, in, in need of some help. Uh, here at Mayo Clinic, we often have opportunities to help patients who are here for the first time perhaps, and we see them in the subway, and you can recognize that deer in the headlights look uh, when they don't know where to go. Their circumstances are overwhelming enough in addition to the facility itself being large and expansive. And so to recognize those opportunities to just take a few minutes, stop, answer their questions, give them some directions, and help them get to the next appointment is certainly one way that we can practice gratitude for, for ourselves and the ability that, that we have, and also engenders gratitude in those people that we help as well. And this is one of those situations where, uh, where we, we can recognize the role of adversity in our life. We typically don't get better without challenge. And I, you know, as, a, as a personal trainer as well here in this facility, we talk about strength building the only way that you can build strength is really to tax your muscles until they fatigue, until they're, they're uh, to the breaking point, basically. And, and that's, that's sort of like adversity. In our own lives, emotionally and socially, we will experience those same kinds of uh, situations where we don't know if we can actually handle any more. And it's very difficult to feel grateful at that time, but if we can recognize those opportunities as uh, chances to, to be grateful for something, um, or for just being alive, being able to experience that, to feel it, uh, to know that there are others that perhaps are in, in worse situations and we really do have much to be grateful for. Uh, and, and it uh, obviously depends on what area of the world that you live in, but there are, there are lots, of, uh, lots of blessings that we can count on our hands uh, here in the United States. You know, one of the, the fun things about working in a facility like this is even just walking down, uh, walking down the hallway, just to uh, to flash a smile, to wink at someone, perhaps a, a youngster <clears throat> who is looking a little bit distraught, uh, to just stop and, and give directions, to compliment someone, uh, and and this is is a wellness coach. Also, this is an area that I find kind of fascinating. Uh, one of the questions I'll ask them is uh, is what's the greatest compliment they've ever received. Uh, and, they, and then I'll ask them, how easy is it for you to accept compliments? Well, compliments are like gifts, and often it's difficult for us to accept compliments, but we often don't see it as a gift. And so for us to be able to give compliments to people is certainly a, a, something that we can do on a daily basis. Uh, I once had a, a supervisor 
who at the end of each week would select two or three people with whom she had had contact during the week and just write them an email and thank them for the contributions that they had made to the organization and to, to the moving forward of the work that we, uh, we did as an organization. I was just always impressed by the fact that she took the time to do that. Often uh, practicing gratitude really takes more time than anything else and that's, the, that's a precious resource that, that we need to reevaluate often. Oh, there are many roads to becoming a health and wellness coach. Um, uh, my path is a little more uh, stray than, than most, but uh, for most folks, uh, some background in, in a health-related profession is typically preferred. There is a certification process uh, that is offered by several different organizations. And at the beginning, uh, toward the end of this next year, there will also be a national certification and uh, credentialing that will be required for being a certified health and wellness coach. So I would check out some of the other organizations that, that offer uh, coach training and uh, go down that route and find out uh, what other opportunities are available. It's, it's kind of a, a, a profession that's in its infancy and so there is so much growth and, and so much potential for this area where, where we're really involved in, in uh, helping people to figure out self-care uh, in addition to medical care and pharmaceutical care and surgical care and, and other kinds of care that they may need from time to time in their life. But uh, gratitude certainly is part of this self-care that they can, they can uh, practice as well. As, um, as you think about perhaps why you should practice gratitude, uh, there, there are a number of different studies that have been done uh, that show multiple benefits from, from uh, practicing gratitude, uh, all the way from relieving stress to, to uh, building social resources, uh, in, increasing spirituality, uh, improving heart health. There was a, an article or a, a, the, uh, yeah, just a piece that was done on public radio here a couple of weeks ago that talked about the, the advantages of uh, improved heart health just from practicing gratitude. Uh, and so uh, I would encourage you to, to check on some of these research articles, uh, Dr. Sood among those and Dr. Emmons uh, from other, other places and there are several others who are also experts on the topic of gratitude and find out what exactly it can do for you if you do it on a daily basis and, and that's what I would encourage you to do, practice gratitude daily.